we'll discuss two different types of approach to model the fuel cell systems. Um, one approach focused on the physical and chemical process of fuel cell. Um, we call that thermodynamics oriented. It uses the physical modeling tools to model the electrochemical equations of the stack and the, the physical process in the balance of the plant. Uh, the models built this way usually have more details and higher fidelity and can be used for designing or optimizing the fuel cell system itself. Um, the other approach is more data-driven. Um, it looks at the fuel cell system as a whole, as an energy source, without worrying too much how, uh, how that happens, right? The detailed physics. We call this a system or, uh, integration-oriented method. Um, the, it tends to be more statistical in nature and has a sort of input and output type of structure using usually lookup tables or empirical equations to, in, to represent the response from a fuel cell system. This type of model contains less details, runs faster, and is suitable for system integration study or designing a supervisory controllers. Um, we'll next show you an example of each approach. The model built with either, either of these or two approaches works well with the uh, virtual vehicle framework we have just discussed. So we'll start with the first approach uh, that's based on the thermodynamic, the physics. Um, what we're showing here on the right is a shipping example in the latest release of MATLAB, R uh, release 2021A. Um, it is a PEM fuel cell system. The equation of the stack is uh, implemented in Simscape language, including the electrochemistry of, uh, for the voltage, um, hydrogen, oxygen consumption, water generation and transport, and heat generation as well. Um, the balance of the plant in this model include the uh, compressor, humidifier, cooling systems, uh, recirculation for the hydrogen, as well as some water management. Um, basically, typical components you'll see in the fuel cell system. So this example model itself um, include a few uh, scenarios and codes to visualize the results. And we can take a look at a couple of those in the next slide. So on the left, we're showing uh, a few characteristic curves for the stack using a current sweep, basically linearly increase the current uh, as the input. We can see that the voltage will drop as uh, current increase uh, and the power output actually increase with the current until a certain point, uh, that's where the maximum current is. Um, the bottom left figure shows the thermal efficiency. Um, it tends to drop when you have a higher current and uh, how much um, hydrogen and oxygen are being consumed from the inlet of the stack to the outlet. Okay, so this is a sort of idealized case you do it during a current sweep, um, checking out the char characteristic of the stack itself. So on the right, it's more, uh, it's closer to a real life scenario. So this is um, based on the power demand from FTP 75 drive cycle. Um, the power demand is actually recorded, pre-recorded for a full vehicle simulation. Um, the model output from this give us an idea of the power generated by the stack as well as the, uh, the amount consumed by the balance of the plant that's on the first figure on the top. Um, the one in the middle shows us the amount of hydrogen consumed and as a result, the tank pressure um, decreases. So on the bottom, we're showing the temperature in different parts of the fuel cell system, uh, the anode, cathode, as well as the, uh, the coolant itself uh, around the radiator, how it's being cooled. So this um, contains the details on the uh, electrical chemistry of the stack and all the thermal fluids aspect modeled uh, in the uh, balance of plant. With these details, we can actually use it to study and optimize the design of the fuel cell system itself, uh, size the component, and develop some local controllers. So, and uh, next, we'll show you another approach um, that does not include these details and uh, of course with different goals and applications. Okay, so this approach is geared towards um, system integration study. So it, it treats the fuel cell system as something that provides electrical power without worrying how it provides the power. Therefore, it can represent the system as lookup tables or empirical equations 
instead of a particular model uh, that works for every scenario, what we actually want to discuss is a workflow to build such a model, okay, using statistical tools from MathWorks. Um, the model can be built using lab data sets or from uh, high fidelity simulations. We can apply a statistical modeling tools to fit and describe the data sets and arrive at a fast and running model which is especially suitable for system integration study and supervisory controller development. One example of MathWorks tools that uh, for this task is the model-based calibration toolbox. It's a set of apps and tools that for modeling and calibrating uh, complex nonlinear systems. Um, there are a lot of application of this tool for um, engine calibration or motor control. And we have had some success using this tool to generate lookup table models for uh, fuel cell system as well. So on the right, this is a typical workflow uh, using this tool. Uh, you can use it to design experiment, use that design to collect data, model those data, and um, generate, uh, generate or export the uh, statistical model or lookup tables from this, and eventually use that to either implement on the control hardware or for further simulation study. So here is an example of um, application of this workflow for uh, fuel cell modeling. We skip the first two steps, the DOE and the data collection, because data is really available. Um, Argonne National Lab has done this test on a Toyota Mirai and made the data available. Um, so here's the citation for that. Uh, we import this data into the model-based calibration toolbox model the data, um, generate the statistical model, export that uh, for further simulation work. Then we can compare the simulation result with the original data set. Um, the current here on the middle left is the input, so they match, of course. Um, then we look at whether we can get a match in the voltage. For most of the time, yes. And when the current is zero, we see the transient, uh, they, they disagree a little bit. Um, that's okay. We know this is the price we're going to pay. Uh, lookup table models tends to not include those details, and uh, it's not surprising to us. Um, but also because the current is zero, when whenever this happens, um, the actual power output from the stack is actually well, very well captured. We're getting an excellent agreement on the bottom right here. Um, this means we can use this model to predict the power output fuel consumption, efficiency, et cetera, and enable the supervisory controller design. So this workflow overall provide a fast track from lab data to a simulation model without digging too much um, to the physical details. Um, we have also include an example of a lookup table model built using this approach in the uh, fuel cell EV reference application you saw earlier. 